All right, I did a video on how I personally headspace my AKMs, and I put mine on the tight side. Like I said, the specs are uh, zero to 33 pounds. You can set it looser or more loose or whatever the correct terminology is. You can set it on the loose side if you want to, but me personally, I think that's just kind of putting in built-in wear. You should shoot the barrel out, the muzzle end out, before you ever get your headspace out of whack if it's done correctly, in, in my opinion. Most of this is just my opinion. But I like to set mine on the tighter side. Like I said, I don't have a uh, force gauge to tell me exactly how much, so that takes some pressure. Some people don't like that, but whatever. You build yours the way you want to. This is how I'm doing mine. But you always use the gauges. Of course, I've put paint on them so I know what's what, because you, you can't see the writing is coming off of these. It shows up good here, but you see there's CIP Manson. That's a go. 762 by 39. Have the no go. But I also have field gauge. And why would you need this on a brand new rifle? Well, technically you shouldn't need it on a brand new rifle. But these come in handy on a used rifle. What if you buy a rifle? Maybe not from a buddy or whatever, but you buy one at a gun show, you buy one that's used, and you want to check it to make sure it's safe, which you should do anyway. Make sure they're clean before you ever pull the trigger on a live round. You should do that with any firearm. But on one of these, you want to check it. And what if your gauges, your go closes super easy, your no-go takes a little bit of force, but this one doesn't go the field. Well, technically you would be in spec and probably good to go. But what if it closes on the field gauge? That would be danger, danger. Don't do it. Don't go shoot it or anything like that. So what do you have to do to fix that? Well, you're going to have to push this pin out and you're going to have to push your barrel in just a little bit. It will not take much. A couple of thousands will make one heck of a difference on one of these things, trust me. And then you'll check it again. Like I said, it should be a little snug on the go. This shouldn't go at all. And then you'll be back to where this definitely won't go. Because it's my understanding, this one's just a little bit longer, the field gauge, than the no-go. So you should be good. Press this out, push it in, Check your headspace with your gauges. And then when you get it where you want it, and it won't take much. We're talking just a few thousandths here. Then you can oversize it. Go to the next uh, pin size. You'll have to set it all up. Run your drill bit in here to where the drill bit, just find a drill bit or your ramer or whatever you used it or have around that will fit this hole. I think the original hole's 277, 275, somewhere around there. 275 or something like that. Put it in, like I said, I have a V-clamp, so I can run that drill or reamer, whatever fits that hole nice and snug, but will go through quite easily, but it's not a lot of slop. Put it in there until you get it up, and that will actually follow that hole and get it set up for you, because you can't always trust that this has to be level. A lot of these things are actually drilled crooked. You know, they wherever country they come from, they throw it up there right quick, pop a hole in it, put a pin in it, way I'm done, assembly line, it goes. So, use a drill bit or a reamer or whatever you have, dial pin, whatever will fit in here, but will slide and pass through easily to get this lined up to chase the hole. Once you do that, then you can oversize drill it, ream it, then put your new pin in. You should be good to go. Same thing if you have one that is way too tight, like the, you buy a rifle from a guy and he's like, man, it only shoots this ammo, it won't shoot anything else. Well, the headspace is probably extremely tight more than what spec is calling for. You'll have to do the same thing, but in reverse. Push the pin out, push it out a few thousandths, then do the same thing. Pick up the hole, drill it, ream it, whatever you're going to do, then put an oversized pin in it. And that should fix it. But the only way is you're going to need gauges. Like I said, this one here only is for one that you may have a lot of rounds through you're not sure of. If it swallows this one, do not take it and fire it. But that's how that's done. Push the pin out, 
in whichever direction you need to go, just a few thousandths, oversize it, repin it with a bigger pin. All right, this is an original pin. I don't know what it came out of a gun, obviously, but I don't know which one. I've got several of them. But we'll check it. And you notice I'm spinning it. Check it in slightly a few different places. It's I'm roughly getting just moderate pressure right here. You don't want to squeeze the crap out of it because your finger's going to roll on this anyway. It's going not going to allow you to squeeze too hard. But 278 is what I'm showing here. Either end, yeah, roughly 278. So I think the spec is 277. Might be 275, something like that anyway. This is one I made out of drill rod, water hardening drill rod. It's the letter N size, like a drill bit, letter N. Should be around 302. And see, these are showing 303. So I'm showing a thousandths bigger on here. Always make sure they're clean. But don't trust that this is a precision instrument. It is not a precision instrument. This gets you close. It can always be, as you can see, thousandths to two thousandths off. Because, yeah, I'm still getting the 303. And the drill rod is 302. The only way to be 100% accurate is to have a set of micrometers. Most people don't have these. These are a lot cheaper. <laughs> but anyway, that's what you would oversize. Now they have sizes that are slightly smaller than this too. It's like I said, this is 277-ish. You might be able to get away with a 280 something or whatever size, but typically it goes up in this drill rod to 302, which is the letter N. And that's what I've done on some of these. I think this, yeah, this one was oversized with the same kind of pin. And I hardened these. Did it at work where I could test it on the Rockwell hardness tester. You can see a little prick mark right there. They came out anywhere from, I think they were 36 to 45. Which is a lot harder than it started out. But all right, I was talking about how you would move this in a few thousandths if your headspace on a used rifle was a little loose. And we if you've put one of these together, you kind of have an idea that, well, you're gonna have to support all of this stuff somehow. Press the barrel in just a few thousandths. How do you do that? Well, there's different tools. This is one I made at work. Very crude and simple. It's all adjustable. And you'll have support here, and then you just press on your barrel just after you remove the pin. Press it in just a little bit. Keep checking. It's kind of a pain in the rear to constantly keep taking everything apart and going and checking. But what if you've got to go the other direction? Hmm, how do you do that? Well, you're going to have to have another little tool, which I made this one too by copying pictures off the internet. And you would lay the front part here, say in a vise. Or whatever you're going to do, you can use the press, but typically if you're just going to go a couple of thousandths, the press isn't a good idea unless you know what you're doing because the press builds up pressure and then, <clears throat> then it jumps. It's going to jump way farther than you want it to go. You can build up pressure and smack the press with a hammer and sometimes it will vibrate it just enough to move it. But if you want to fine tune it, one of the best ways i found is this just fits in here. It's machined where it fits in between your, like that, stays. It's machined out where the uh, ejector won't hit anything. You just hold this, but you have this up against, say, in your vise, upside down. And then I just pop, hit it, give it a good whack, take it out right quick, check your headspace. Need to move a little more, it didn't move at all, put it in, whack, hit it again. Like I said, of course, you're going to have the pin out of it, obviously. But those are the two tools you're going to need if you're going to move it one way or the other. If you're going to press it in, you'll need something similar to this. If you need to move it out, 
you're going to need something similar to this or you're going to have to get creative. Be very careful. You can end up damaging something or worse, hurting yourself.